On the Build Show today, we're talking soundproofing. Everybody wants a comfortable and a quiet house. I got three tips for you today. If you're building or remodeling, three things you can do to make your house a lot quieter and a lot more comfortable. And we're gonna show you how to do it on the cheap. Now remember, these three things we're gonna talk about though, you can really only do them during construction. This isn't stuff that you can do very easily later. Today's Build Show is sponsored by Canal. Let's get going. Okay, y'all, so soundproofing, quieting down a house, there's three things you can do. We're gonna start with the obvious. There's insulation behind me. Insulation on interior walls in key locations is a cheap way to really make a much quieter house. Now, how does insulation help? Think about this interior wall that's right behind me. I'm in a bedroom space right here. On the other side of me is hallway. There's gonna be some 5 8 sheetrock that will get attached to this wall and then 5 8 on the other side. If this wall was hollow, if I had nothing in here, when I'm talking or when the radio is on in this space, that's gonna vibrate that sheetrock and with an empty cavity, with an empty uh, stud bay basically in there, that vibration's gonna have nothing that will stop it from vibrating the other sheetrock on the other side. And that's one way sound is going to move. So by putting bat insulation in this cavity, we're gonna add some mass and we're gonna stop that vibration. This is kind of cool. The science behind that, what actually happens in the insulation is when the sound waves hit this, it vibrates and the insulation actually gets a little bit hot in here, not hot enough for you to feel it, but the insulation stops that vibration and it's gonna help lessen that transfer between this room and that room. Now, we don't want, probably don't wanna spend a ton of time getting into the sound transmission coefficient, but one cheap test you can do is if you have a room like this that's fully insulated, you can actually put a radio in this room. You can go around the corner with a sound meter, and I've done this several times under construction. It's shocking how much quieter the house is. But as a cheap test, just listen what it's like to hear folks working downstairs. And as the insulator is insulating these walls, you're gonna be shocked that even though I've got an open doorway here, so much sound gets transferred and stopped by just having these walls insulated. Now, there's a couple reasons why this is the cheap method, right? We could do uh, multiple layers of drywall. We could go to a really expensive version of drywall that's intended for sound transmission but this is gonna be your least cost method is putting some insulation in there. Now there's a, a bunch of different types of insulation. In particular, Knopf insulation is not particularly expensive material. And we could go to, let's say a mineral wool or even a spray foam in this wall, but this is gonna give essentially the same results. So this is a really good method on the cheap. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is air transfer, because if there's air transferring between rooms, air is gonna transport sound as well. I learned this as a young builder. I had a job where I had attached condos I was building and I had a foundation wall that was concrete in between me and the separating room. And I had a sound engineer tell me, you know, Matt, if we drilled a half inch hole in this 10 inch thick concrete wall, I could hear you on the other side of that concrete wall as if we were standing next to each other. All it would take is a half inch hole in that concrete to transfer that noise as if we were standing right next to each other. So besides this insulation in the wall, the next thing we need to do is treat all our penetrations in the wall. So if you look behind me here, I've got an electrical outlet, I've got a switch. We need to do everything we can to get air from transferring through those. Now there's layers here as well when it comes to cheapness. The least cost method is gonna be using canned spray foam. Next up from that is gonna be acoustic caulk. And the best way to do it is gonna be using a putty pad. The commercial guys are familiar with this. We use them for fireproofing in commercial buildings. But a putty pad basically adheres to the back of the outlet, covers over all of the wires and all the penetrations in that box, and will prevent that sound from coming through. And then after the sheet rockers have finished, we also need to run a bead of caulking between the outlet and the sheet rock. Now we could use acoustic caulk, which is a little bit more expensive, or we could back down to a less expensive version, which would be something like Big Stretch from Sashco. And all we're gonna do is caulk that. So then this bad insulation and that air sealing we did at the individual outlet are gonna work together to make sure that that sound isn't transferring to that next room over. Now pay attention though, we've got all kinds of different things in this house. We're gonna have wires that are gonna be penetrating top plates. 
We're gonna have plumbing pipes that are penetrating walls and floors. We also wanna use some canned foam on that. Now your inspector a lot of times wants you to do that for fireproofing reasons, but I'm on this video telling you, you wanna do it for sound reasons. You're gonna see that throughout this house. All of the penetrations like in this wall right here have spray foam going through the wires and through the pipes. That's gonna greatly reduce the sound through those areas. And that's really inexpensive in the scheme of things. Now we do wanna do that before the insulator shows up. We could do all the putty proofing and sound caulking in stages throughout the job but these are really inexpensive. Okay, the third thing we wanna think about though is mass. This is where things do get a little bit more expensive. For instance, mass is harder to vibrate. So if I had a concrete wall separating me from this room over here, that's gonna not vibrate, right? That concrete is really solid. So if I have a thumping base in this room with a concrete wall, really nothing is gonna go through that concrete. On the other hand, when we get a lighter weight wall, a framed wall with drywall, it's gonna be easier for that vibration to transfer, even with that air transfer and that insulation in there. So that's where mass comes into play. Now the least cost version of mass for me is to go to a thicker drywall. Typically on my projects, I always specify 5 8 instead of half inch drywall. And that little bit of mass, believe it or not, will make a difference. But if I've got a particular room that I really wanna quiet down, a lot of times I've got let's say a primary bedroom and a kitchen next door, I really don't want that kitchen noise from coming into someone sleeping. I'm gonna do all kinds of things to add some extra mass, but the least cost way to do it is to double hang the drywall. That's a really good way to do it. Two layers of 5 eighths will add some mass. We could also, in this case, upgrade to a more expensive type of drywall that's intended for sound transmission. There's several brands out there on the marketplace that do that. And by adding that extra mass to that wall, that's gonna help you reduce sound transmission. Now, a couple things I wanna mention at the end of this video here. First off, think about the least cost way of achieving any of this, and that's your, that's your best bet first. Now, if you do have a client specifically that's saying, I'm, I'm looking to get a higher level of quietness, be cautious as a builder with guaranteeing anything like, oh, you're never gonna hear anything between this room and that room. That can, that can really bite you in the end. But what we're talking about here in this video, adding some insulation, dealing with air sealing and dealing with some mass, those are quantifiable in terms of cost and they're, they're frankly not that expensive. We're talking about hundreds of dollars potentially to do a whole house, maybe thousands, but depending on how much you're doing. And typically we're only thinking about soundproofing uh, or quieting down bathrooms, laundry rooms, bedrooms, sometimes floors and ceilings, depending on what's above or below you. But think about that. And lastly, I also forgot to mention, subfloor can make a difference as well. The more massive the subfloor, the less transfer between rooms and between floors on the house. So in particular, I'm a big fan of the thicker Advantec. I use inch and eighth Advantec on most of my projects. That really, that thickness and mass means that it's harder to transfer sound between floors. If you really want to quiet that down though, you think about concrete construction or even lightweight gypsum being applied over top of a floor. Check out my other videos if you want to get in depth on that. But those really jump up the cost. Those are very, very expensive. So by going to a less cost option like pinning insulation underneath the floor and using a thicker floor, we're going to really be able to cut down 80, 90% of the quietness and not have to go to that major expense. Big thanks to Knopf for sponsoring this video. I gotta tell you, I learned quite a few things about this insulation. And one of the things I learned about it is the binder that these guys use. It actually talks about it right here. It's uh, Ecos technology. Instead of traditional binders, these guys have a bio-based binder. And it's actually the reason why this insulation is brown compared to some other insulations that are white on the marketplace. It's a, uh, it's a vegetable and bio-based. I'm not even sure all the secret ingredients, but they tell me that when they actually make this, there's some heat involved in the process, and that turns those bio-based things, like corn is one of the ingredients, it turns it brown. It kind of caramelizes the sugars. And I gotta tell you, I don't know what they've done here, but this is very different than a lot of insulations that I've used in the past. But this is really, really nice. I gotta tell you, I'm very, very impressed with this product. A couple other things you want to know about, it's formaldehyde free, and these guys have several certifications if you look on their uh, label. Green Guard certified, asthma and allergy certified, 
This is a really impressive insulation and it doesn't have a premium price, which is why I think this is a great choice when we're thinking about doing soundproofing on the cheap. This has a declared list that says, look, we don't have anything on that list. So this is a really very non-toxic product and you've seen me touching and feeling it. I gotta tell you, I would not do that with a lot of products, but this is very impressive. Okay, y'all, let's summarize what we learned today. Adding insulation in between our walls, especially interior walls, is gonna cut down sound transfer by absorbing sound waves and also dampening those vibrations. Don't forget about adding some mass potentially to those walls to block that sound to begin with. And vitally important is sealing those air paths where sound could escape. When combined with other soundproofing techniques, this insulation we're talking about here can create a quiet and comfortable living environment and is gonna control noise at multiple levels. Okay, y'all, you saw me rubbing my face and my hands with this uh, Knopf insulation. Just to make it clear, the manufacturer does say you need to wear your PPE when you're installing this. You know, gloves, long sleeves, a dust mask. But anecdotally, I heard from the Texas rep that a lot of insulation companies have really gone to and like this Knopf insulation because of this reason, that it really doesn't bother them like a lot of other insulations do. So, you know, you still need to wear your PPE. This isn't necessarily uh, manufacturer recommended, but I can tell you that I've been very sensitive to insulation over the years. I think I'm a little more allergic than most people. Uh, and yet I haven't any, any problems and I've been doing this all day on the job site. So just wanted to make that real clear for you. Guys, big thanks to Knopf for sponsoring today's video. They make some terrific products. I'll put a link to them in the description below. But if you're new to this channel and you're not familiar with our content, go check out our website, thebuildshow.com or hit that subscribe button below. You know, we've got content here that's brand new every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Oh! Build shit.